Andrew over at Maple Leaf Matchbox Makeovers has invited the community to join him in celebrating the one year anniversary of his channel and reaching 1,000 subscribers. He's actually passed that already. <laughs> so it's a Porsche build off and after you do your build off, you're supposed to give it away to anyone, anywhere. <laughs> I had these two Porsche 924s, and I ended up doing the orange one. Ever since I was uh, pretty much high school age, I've loved the 924. It was, uh, it was the Porsche I thought I might be able to afford at some point uh, when it came out, because it, it was relatively inexpensive. It replaced the 914, as I recall. But uh, a lot of people didn't like the 924, and then the 944 came out, and it was really beefed up, so that was a lot more appealing. But I've always had a, an affinity for this car, so I thought this would be a perfect one to do for this build. So did the usual, you know, stripped it with citrus strip. Uh, it has one post, and... Uh, ended up drawing that out. You see the one post is at the front of the car and then the back half of the car has uh, an area that it hooks in. It's basically the license plate area that pops into a hole on the back half of the car. So this little guy needed some cleaning, but uh, I ended up, once I had it cleaned up, I hit it with Krylon semi-gloss white because I had a big can of it around. And uh, then the Minwax Clear Polyurethane as well. Because of how it fought me, I actually ended up putting the clear coat on before I added these details, which is kind of out of the norm for me. But I knew these taillights were going to be a bear. So there's the, it has a multitude of, of lights on the back. There's an orange on each side in, in this little honeycomb kind of pattern. There's an orange on each side a white uh, opening or light, if you want to call it that, a little panel. That's what I'm shooting for there. And then the rest, the remaining four on each side are red. So I did the orange, and while that's off drying, I got out the foots to clean up the windshield. Yeah, I know. You've seen me do this with my fingers before. I, I prefer to do this than using the Dremel because I've just burned the crap out of windshields before. Not a lot, and I think I've done one badly and one kind of badly. <laughs> so I use my finger and then I go over it with the, you know, the uh, microfiber cloth. And I'll just keep doing that until it looks good. And then, you know, naturally once I get that where I want it, it's, it's interesting because on the casting originally, this looked like it was a lot darker than this. And it looks darker when it's on the casting. But it's actually obviously pretty transparent. But I got it where I wanted, you know, wash it off and everything, get the polish off, and then it's time for gauzy. I know uh, everybody needs their share of gauzy. The windshield isn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, I felt it was good enough. Yeah, it was acceptable. It was a lot better than the windshield on the other, <laughs> other Porsche I had to choose from. Um, and the gauzy always helps. It, it, you know, it. The reason I like the gauzy is because of the thickness. It does a lot of filling that the pledge doesn't do for me. And maybe I just need that added, you know, filling in because of how I polish them. But the gauzy works very well for me. So, uh, you know, I, while this is off drying, I end up. Uh, deciding what to do with wheels. And that was one of the toughest things on this. I wasn't, well, I didn't have the, the right wheels for it. I knew in my mind the Porsche wheels I wanted and I didn't have anything close to it. I did happen to have some monoblock wheels available and that's what I end up going with. That uh, base is metal. I ended up throwing that in a lime away mixture to clean it up and then I Polished it up a little bit. I decided to stick with the black interior. I did not do any detailing to the interior. But there's those little front pads. Basically, they're bumper strips in a way on the front and back. Those were kind of chewed up from play use. So 
So I needed to sand those down, but not too much because they have kind of a lip to them that hangs over the body. It's a little bit thicker than the area that actually sticks through the body. There's a portion that comes through the openings in the body, and then there's a lip that sticks up above each one slightly. I did not want to sand that off. And then I thought, well, what am I going to do to protect this? And I, I wash it off. I get it all nice and clean. And then I ended up taking that and... Uh, I end up, and I think I show it to you later, so I'll hold off for now. <laughs> um, then it was time to paint the red panels. And so, you know, I used a toothpick for these. And what I ended up doing, you know, I'm filling in, there are areas on the body for this, that little, as I said, like honeycomb pattern, or the little six panels on each side. Uh, there are indentations for that, and so I just needed to fill that in with the red. And then I end up going over it with a Gundam marker to fill in the black around the lights. And, you know, I've said it before that, you know, all of these builds are learning experiences for me. And, and I'm trying to get better at building these. And I'm bringing you along kicking and screaming through this process. <laughs> you're, you're getting to see how I'm working my way through these things, I guess is the best way to put it. I'm not trying to teach anybody anything because Lord knows I'm not qualified to teach anybody anything. Um, but I'm, I'm showing you how I can get there. And so there you see where I've sanded on those pads on the front and the back. And the bottom of the sides also stick out a little under the body. So I have a little ball jar of pledge and even though I kind of bad-mouthed Pledge a minute ago, because it's thin, it works very well in other applications for me. And so I ended up just dipping that in the Pledge. And yeah, naturally, I had to drain the hell out of this because of all the you know, nooks and crannies in this interior. But once it dried up, I was really pleased with how it worked. I, I, I don't know that it could have worked out any better. It was almost like spraying a clear coat on it without spraying the clear coat on it. It, uh, it gave the interior a nice look and it did exactly to those pads what I hoped for. I threw the monoblocks on there and uh, you know, the, they come with a relatively soft axle. And so I just needed to shorten them up a little bit. I used the uh, fencing pliers there that you saw me use in another recent video just to crimp the ends and it's just enough to keep the wheel in place. And then they worked out pretty well. I did end up having to grind the tabs down, obviously, to drop those in. And yeah, I throw a little uh, CA glue on them, a little uh, baking powder on there. And, uh, you know, they end up being good and solid. They aren't ideal wheels for this build. I had considered trying to print 3D wheels for this, and then I looked at these monoblocks and I thought, you know, <laughs> they're going to work. <laughs> um, the way the casting is done, if I wanted to get really elaborate on this, I probably should have used axle tubes and narrowed the frame in a little bit so that the wheels didn't stick out as far out of the body, out of the lines of the body as they do. But again, I didn't want to do too much to this casting. I wanted to keep it somewhat original, as goofy as that sounds. And then, yeah, that little super tiny little scrap you see there. Yeah, you can barely see there. <laughs> it's uh, a decal for a license plate, of all things. And it's one of the things that, you know, in a... If I had more experience at this, I probably would have tried to print decals for those tail lights. But to be completely honest, that's just beyond me right now. And uh, I was thrilled that I could get, I do have decals of uh, license plates that I've created here. So that works. And then I did the molding strips on the sides. And again, the frame around the tail lights 
using the Gundam marker. It works you know, pretty well for that kind of thing. So uh, now it's time to throw it all together. I'd like to thank Andrew uh, for holding this build off, and I'd like to congratulate him on, on his anniversary and reaching 1,000 subscribers. His channel is an excellent channel, and uh, I'm not surprised that he's hit 1,000, and uh, he's definitely onward and upward from there. So de you know, please check out his channel. There is a link down below in the description, and check out all of the other builders in this build off. He's having a great turnout on this. I, I believe the last thing I heard was it's roughly, I think it's over 35 builders approaching 40 builders, as I recall, which is a fantastic turnout. So uh, be sure and check them out. There you see how the side panels of that interior, the black on the sides also shows. So having that fledge coat really helps that as well. So there you have the uh, Hot Wheels up front 924. I always wanted a white one too, so. <laughs> that was kind of my dream car. And then when they came out with the 944, naturally I wanted that in red. That was just a mean, beefy looking Porsche. <laughs> so there you have the end result. Those tail lights, yeah. I'm happy with them, and at the same time, they look a little bit like kid paint to me. <laughs> and, uh, throwing that decal on there for the license plate, I think, cheered me up a little bit about the back of it. It's kind of tough to see in the lighting. You know, being a white car under the lights, it's kind of tough. But uh, there you see that. I do have some glamour shots coming up that I hope the lighting is a little bit better for you in those. Thank you so much for watching these videos. If you're a subscriber to the channel, thank you for your support. And a special thanks to my Patreon members for all of their support. As I was mentioning to a friend recently when we were talking about it, my Patreon levels are pretty low. I have one that's basically like buying me a cup of coffee and one that's buying me a cup of coffee and a donut. <laughs> So it's a fun way to think about it. Thank you all for watching these and uh, catch you in the next one.